Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be beginning the narration and character voicing for the side story where Vernal winds will never blow. And I will happily say that this title is a mouthful. But anyway, before we begin, uh, let's go over the usual stuff. First and foremost, for anybody who might be new to the channel and will bump into it through this very first episode, hello and welcome, I hope you enjoy your stay. There's a lot of narrated and character voice uh, stories here for Arknights on the channel, if you just want to go through them, listen to them, uh, when, you when you don't have the time to read yourself. There's a lot of playlists, so far I have covered quite the substantial amount of stuff outside of some very very old stuff so uh, take a peek maybe you'll find something that you haven't had the time to read uh, yourself in the past but do have time to listen be it in commute or something else all right with that out of the way first and foremost the question that i always ask here at the beginning of every single new narration is do you need to understand any of the prior stories that came before this one to more enjoyed this one or rather have a better understanding of what is happening this time around i do have to say that i would recommend reading at least at least invitation to vine before going straight into this story you can however keep on listening if you want to uh stuff will explain itself but considering that how many characters already today in this very first part in the very beginning of the story will be making pretty much a return from Invitation to Vine, I would recommend that story, especially because it is a story that introduced us uh, out of the three prior stories to this one. The Invitation to Vine story is the one that introduces us quite a lot to Yan, its culture, the Sui, uh, the regulators, politics, everything. <laughs> the two stories that were uh, introduced to us prior to Invitation to Vine, which is uh, who is real uh who is real pretty much just focused on dusk her powers and uh the place she was at and so on and so forth and the big sui stuff only happens towards the end of this story which uh gets later kind of elaborated again anyway in invitation to wine and the very first story that introduced us to the first sibling which is the ancient forge story very super short story by the way uh is um well, it is very <laughs> much all over the place, considering that that entire story, while yes, it has little tidbits of information throughout its entire length, is uh, a story that is essentially a movie plot, concocted by Nian and Dusk. Oh, sorry, Nian and Lala, not Dusk. Uh, and uh, yeah, but if you do want to go in sequential order from the very start and catch up to all of the stories, I did all of the narrations for all three stories prior to this one. Uh, links in the description, numbered 1, 2, and 3 uh, in their order. So if you want to go through all of them, playlists are right there. Uh, but yeah, let us now proceed into the stages, because I do need to say a couple of more things before we begin. So first off, yes, this is all we're going to cover today. <laughs> Literally this. Uh, it is already going to be a pretty long episode, even if it's just this short segment here. However, before we begin, I want to say very quickly that, y yes, while this event starts with its own um, CG cutscene when you click first time into it, just like similar to Il Siracusano, where I used the CG cutscene in a specific part of the story where it fit very well in, I'm going to see if this one kind of fits in somewhere uh, better down the line as we go through the story. Oh, and by the way, the uh, narration and character voicing will be, considering I'm gonna do two nodes at a time, uh, if they're long enough, uh, probably gonna be a daily upload go after this one goes up. So this one goes up first on Saturday, so expect the next one to be up on Sunday or Monday early morning. But anyway, uh, outside of that, uh, like I said, the 3D CG will use, but probably somewhere down the line. However, uh, there is another cutscene that we are going to be using today to begin, right before we start uh, this scene right here. But, because this whole thing starts on the training stage, I will start with the narration through the title and uh, the description of the training stage, proceed to the title and the description of the uh, cutscene stage, and we're going to go straight into the cutscene and then straight into the story, and I think you will understand 
once the cutscene finishes, why I picked this different cutscene to, uh, outside of the game, uh, start off the story today. Uh, the cutscene that I'm gonna be using is officially released on the official Arknet's EN channel. Uh, I will leave a link in the description. However, I do want to point out that even on the EN channel, the thing is uh, completely voiced by one single uh, person in Chinese. There are embedded subtitles, so if you do uh, want to go and read through them yourselves, uh, if it's not visibly enough, go to the official Arknet's EN channel if you want to, you know, read in peace what is being said below. Uh, I will say, however, from what I noticed, there are sadly no, even on the official channel, no embedded uh, captions. Oh, sorry, no captions, not embedded. Embedded text is there. There are no captions on the video. So, uh, you'll probably... I don't know, the text is small. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Even even for my tastes, the text is very small on screen. So, I'll, I'll uh, say this before we officially start here. Uh, considering that I know that uh, at least a couple of uh, viewers on the channel have uh, eyesight problems that they've told me in comments uh, in older episodes, if you are still watching these um, or any anybody else who has eyesight problems and cannot read uh, what is happening during those cutscenes, do leave me a comment in the uh, comment section of this video and I will make a transcript and uh, either at the beginning of the next episode or the episode after or after, whenever I see the comment, uh, I will read the whole thing out without the cutscene. So you can uh, hear what has been said during the whole thing. Okay, I think I've said enough. Uh, this is enough of a long intro. Apologies, I want to say a couple of things before we start. But yeah, let's begin, shall we? So then, our journey here in this side story will begin on the tutorial stage titled Lone Redoubt. And it says, War is never far from human. Continuing on to our cutscene Dream of Youth. Few are those who truly break away from home. Hong 但国业出照觉察到了头顶的庞大阴影又一个丰收之年你们试图守护自己幼稚的文明
，那确实是一场真正的战争。浮尸百万，穿江鱼翅，山岳在蝼蚁的啃噬下崩撤，他的同族死伤尽半，愤怒、不解的、残存的同族，在他身上留下难以愈合的伤口，弃他而去。他以天地设局。而自己终成一枚棋子，以为变化算尽，却早已落了后手，真是傲慢又愚蠢。他不得不向渺小的人类俯首，陵墓幽暗，正好适合吞咽屈辱。可笑的是，我对那份屈辱。感同身受，我是谁？我那些弟弟妹妹要几时才能明白，这个他们苦苦求索的问题毫无意义？民间口口相传的神话，撕碎台秘藏的卷宗，都不过是他的一场大梦，梦醒，皆是泡影。<笑>无趣至极，荒唐至极。但是，投子认父，哪怕残局将尽，以身助子，我依然有破局之手。千年来，能坐在这棋屏前的。没有几人，而我的对手，从来都只有一个。该你落子了。All right, very quickly before I start reading here from this screen, a quick thing that I forgot to mention here at the beginning. There is several moments, or rather, at least two moments in this very story, this very beginning here, and later on, where there is going to be a character talking off screen, where it's very hard to tell who it is because the game is not showing us who the other party is. For that reason, and in those moments, I will be doing just a normal narration over、uh, for what is being said.、Uh, I know it's going to be probably hard to follow. I mean, it's hard to follow anyway because the game never likes to tell us who is talking with who, which is kind of a bit of a shame in storytelling. But what can you do?、Uh, however, I do have a general idea who the two here are. However, I don't wanna a hundred percent commit to the voices, just not to confuse both myself and anybody anybody else listening even more. So there, there you go. I just want to say that very quickly. All right, but anyway, let us begin. <clears throat> It's one thing to make me play go with you because you're bored, dear brother. It's another to use the pieces to form the character for bored. I can see you haven't practiced the go theory I taught you. As if that would help me against you. It's true that the character on the board doesn't look as nice as your handwriting. Why don't you find something else to pass the time? If it's not really a go game that you're after, go hiking, learn an instrument. I could teach you calligraphy if it comes down to that. The go match may have been devoid of interest, but there's meaning in reading my opponent's thoughts from the moment,、uh, from the movement of the pieces. Oh, what thoughts did you read this time? Well. <clears throat> hey, yo, Sai. What gives? The show skipped from episode seventeen to episode twenty. Happens with a scratch disc. Must have been the sand. Just deal with it. It's not that bad. It was a key moment. Shi Shin Xiao and Shen Fei Bai were at each other's throats a moment before. Then suddenly they're fighting side by side. How did we get there? Shi Shin Xiao. Finds out Shifu and Bai killed his Shifu, and sets out to kill him in turn. 
he arrives at Yumen, however, he finds Shen Fei Bai, a high-ranking officer in the military. Within, with invaders at the gates, Xi Xing Xiao su uh, suffers a sleepless night and realizes that there is more at stake than personal vengeance, and so he joins the Grandmaster's banner to face the foe. It's a simple story, but the duel by the cliffs was a classic. But in Tian, how many times did you watch that? Any child in town could recite the plot of Heroes of Human backwards. There's just one detail that this gentleman left out. Xi Xing Xiao didn't set his grudge aside when he first saw Shen Fei Bai in the army. It was the Grandmaster who pledged to face Xi Xing Xiao's sword on behalf of Shen Fei Bai, leading to the duel by the cliffs. Clouds darkened the skies and the winds bellowed, as though heaven and earth were witness to the showdown. The two drew their swords. A tourist in Sargon garb, responding in an awkward Yanese dialect. Nonsense, nonsense! Fight look good, but details no, no good. You again, Hishan. Do you even know enough Yanese to understand the story? Of course! Heroes of human tell true story 50 years ago. Many heroes joined together, even thought disagreement, still fight together against enemy under Grandmaster. And no many scenes shot in this inn. Worst shot, this inn. <laughs> Looks like you know a thing or two about Yanis history. Of course, Grandmaster tell me when teach me fighting in Sargon. Grandmaster has sword, but sword special, cannot pull out. This again. How could you lose to that feline girl so easily if you're really the Grandmaster's pupil? What about feline girl? She very strong. Why you look down on her? He's not looking down on her. He's looking down on... The crowd bursting out in laughter around them. So if the TV show was adapted from a true story, was there really a time in human when Kung Fu adventurers joined forces with the army against the common foe? To enjoy the freedom of being a, a, a one's own master, but also achieve great things fighting for one's country, it's pretty cool. Well, it's a TV show. The only people who know how things really went down historically are the ones who were there. Anyway, swords and spears are out of fashion. If you really want to do something for your country, you should learn arts and become a Tianxi. How would a fortress like human operate without civilians working to supply its resources? The people who came here to this cold and remote place when the city was first built, and the people who still stay here, they're fighting for their country in their own way. The only thing in the TV show that we know is real for sure, uh, the Grandmaster is leaving too. Out of the way. The medicine you ordered. Thanks, just put it over there, I'll have someone take it to the back. I've got the creams for bruising and burns, but we didn't have enough supplies to make herbal meals. Uh, here's the money. Send my regards to the doc. Oh, and uh, we just had our supplies delivered. Take some back to the clinic. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. One second, I'll get someone to help. No need. He uh, carried the whole card on his shoulders? Um, how did the clinic find someone so strong? Good morning, sir. I've been here a few days, but I've never seen this place empty. <laughs> we just linked up to resupply with Lungman a few days ago, only to run into a catastrophe that forced an emergency separation. Lots of merchants and tourists were stranded in Newman, filling up the inns. Business is good, but it also means more trouble. Especially when people who are already frustrated start arguing. There are many who would love to sh uh, to have your problem. Although, come to think of it, my head would probably start to hurt if my little business back in Lugman started getting so busy. Uh, would you care to start the day with some tea? Sure. What about the thing I asked you to look into? Uh, here, the human... Arena Board of Fame records from the past six months. Not much I can do if the martial artist you're looking for isn't on it. 
So, human operates an area, uh, an arena in this in this day. Such a martial tradition is impressive. The Lord Exorcist trains his troops well, and there is no need for folks like us to fight on the battlefield these days. Still, the martial artists need somewhere to hone their kung fu, hence the arena. Anyway, I would suggest you stay a few days, if it's not urgent. With so many people passing through, someone may have seen the one you're looking for. You could also ask at the uh, South Side Sword Forge. The Shifu there know, uh, knows the city inside and out, plus lots of Kung Fu fighters hanging around. Thank you. It's always tough when you don't know the lay of the land. Mind if I ask what this is about? Are you looking for a friend? An enemy? A debt to repay? Or a debt to collect? I guess you could say this uh, particular individual owes me a pretty big debt. Flashback. How long will you be this time? No idea. Will you ever come back? When it's all done. Do you know what Waifu's bir do you know that Waifu's birthday is in three days? I wasn't a good husband and I can't be a good father. It's enough that I achieve one thing in life. Adept to collect, eh? That's gonna be tough. Yen is a big country and more than a hundred thousand souls live in human alone. Not easy to find someone who doesn't want to be found. Hmm. Anyway, your tea is ready. Would you like a side of human style uh, sauteed meat to go with it? Sure, I'll take a seat and wait for my girl to finish her match. Lungman Spring Tea. Just came in. We only get fresh leaves like these once every few years. Appreciate it. Feels like a waste to use them on me. Don't say that. We always value our guests. Hmm. Hmm. Spring tea from Lungman shouldn't have bitter taste this time of year. It's you? We weren't supposed to meet here. Um, excuse me? No, you're not. Uh, do you two know each other? Would you care to share a table since we're pretty full today? No, we don't. I'm not staying long. Just a cup of tea. It's fine, it's fine. Very well then. Let me know if you need anything. Did you uh, mistake me for someone else? You just looked similar. Must have been an old friend that you haven't seen for ages. I suppose. Stick to your tea. Have one on me. You're buying me a cup of tea, even though we don't know each other. All meetings are the work of fate, even the ones that start with a misunderstanding. Here's to finding old friends soon. It'll happen when it happens. No point trying to force it. That's an interesting answer. The answer lies not in the ones we're look the answer lies not in the ones we're looking for, but in the journey of looking for them. Do you talk so much to everyone? Ah I apologize. Are you uh, leaving? I said I wasn't going to stay long. How strange. Are you sure you don't want to speak to the general first? It's been a while since the last time you came back. Father is a busy man. I should not bother him at work. Perhaps I'm being too much of a busybody, but the Department of Discipline and Supervision found your actions faultless in the Shangshu matter. You should not feel guilty about facing the general. I don't. There is nothing for me to do at home anyway. I thought I might as well take a look around town. The Grand Tutor must have sent me to Yumen expecting something to happen. 
I should keep my eyes open. I'll come with you, if it's official business. It's been years since the last time you were here, isn't it, Uncle Taihei? It must bring back memories. Things have changed a lot. It's impressive that the General has been able to keep the people of humans safe and thriving, with constant warfare going on in the north. The arena remains as popular as ever. You still rank fifth. Uh, you still rank fifth on the board of fame. Fame is fleeting. I would be glad to see some young talent knock me off the board. The girl's in the ring right now. Hmm. Uh, did something catch your attention? I was just thinking how your kung fu would compare to theirs. <clears throat> The Grand Tutor says that the Candle Holder's duty is to carry the fire that drives out the shadows of the Feron Moot, and to travel amongst the uh, amongst two people to learn their troubles. A sense of duty comes first, shrewdness second, Kung Fu comes third or fourth at best. Indeed. Mm. Um, um, so, um, how do I compare then? To be frank, while few are as swift as you, you know you had to head fight, I would say your chances are 30-70, in the other side's favor. The pair have already traded a dozen moves. There is hardly time to catch one's breath. The feline girl advances, launching a flurry of fists that keeps her opponent's weapon uh, weapon hand in check. She kicks out. Her opponent, a girl in exotic garb, goes along with it, leaping back with the kick. Halt! You're out of the ring. It's true that you couldn't make full use of your ranged weapon in the ring. But rules are rules. It's my win. <laughs> You're very good, and I've uh, never seen anything like your style of fighting. The exotically dressed girl, answering back in an awkward Yanese dialect. Lose this, no more fights? A martial artist shouldn't be too obsessed with victory and defeat, but I can't lose here. You want the sword too? Sword? What sword? People in the city say number one on the board of fame can get the special sword. No, I uh, just want to climb the ranking so my name can be seen. You number 31 means 30 people stronger than you? I suppose so. You are better than me. I guess this won't work. Hey, uh, where are you going? If I win this, I make it to the first page on the board of fame. But will he, will he see it? Uh, round 15. The Millennium was hit in the right wrist, right pectoral, central abdomen and throat. Cubai was not hit. Cubai is the winner. <laughs> I would have died three times if this was a real battle. Real battles are about the mind as much as Kung Fu. Who knows how things would have turned out? You are indeed a Grandmaster student. It was humbling. Thank you. I would like to see the Grandmaster's comments. The recent ones are all here. The Grandmaster has been paying close attention to your bouts, despite his busy schedule, and he has high praise in particular for your swordsmanship. <laughs> Something on your mind? I was just thinking what he meant by not going... not enough purity in the sword. And how long would it take for me to reach the point where I can beat him? There is no mention of it in the Grandmaster's Book of Kung Fu. I don't think he said it to anyone but you. As for beating the Grandmaster, uh, I'm not sure how many in the entire world have ever dreamt of such a thing. You think I'm crazy? 
No, my job is simply to follow the Grand Master and record the martial arts of the world truthfully. There are many more people than usual at the training grounds today. Why isn't he here? General Zuo has vis visitors. The Grand Master is also meeting an old acquaintance in the keep. I'll be going then. Manzo, it was an honor. Uh, that first set of words there pretty much just means a polite goodbye. <laughs> Why do you always treat me like I'm your senior, even though you've been following the Grand Master for much longer? The Grand Master says that one who keeps records must be acutely aware of the strengths of others. You are stronger and wiser than I am. I have much to learn from you. If you say so. The general knocks an arrow, drawing the thick bow so full that it looks like the full moon. The hand on the bow trembles slightly, and the arrow wobbles with it. The general's bow furrows deeper with each wobble. The arrow pierces the target, half an inch away from the bullseye. Good shot, sir. No need to flatter, I know my own body. I could still swing the sword and spear a couple of years ago, but now I can hardly hold a bow properly. Even if there is no need for me to stand on the battlefield myself, it's not proper to have a sick man leading the human garrison. Human garrison. My time is short. All the court knows that your injuries bear witness to decades of service in defense of human. I'm not concerned about my health, health or life, but I have some unfinished business. The Grand Tutor has instructed me to assist you. I will help you manage human's return. Did the Grand Tutor say assist? I'm sure you understand his intentions. I haven't thanked you for your help in Shangshu yet. I apologize for the trouble that Zuo Li caused. He's still young and inexperienced. You exaggerate, sir. You must understand what a father feels. Zuo Li has done well, but he is in a position that does not permit any mistakes, no matter how small. Lord Zuo is young and bright, a rising star. It's not unusual for young... I'm sorry if I'm breaking up here, but I kinda glanced up because for a split second I remembered something. They have not fixed his neck. <laughs> his neck still look, looks like it's cut off. Liang Xun, why? Why do they not fix your character portrait? Why do you still look like you're beheaded in Photoshop? <clears throat> anyway, sorry. I didn't notice this before. I don't know why, why I just suddenly remember this. <clears throat> anyway. It's not unusual for young people to be a little imp impetus. I would not worry too much about it. What about me, Liang? Am I impetus to you? I believe you have your reasons, sir. Word of your benevolent administration of Shangshu has reached even you men, Liang, but have you ever seen a battle with your own eyes? There were pirates on the Shangshu River a few years ago, but nothing compared to the battles that you have seen. Then you understand that making decisions as a general in the field is different from managing at a desk. The battlefield is ever-changing and thousands of lives hinge on your every decision. Which do you think is more important then? Decisiveness or caution? The bestial Sui matter is pressing. We must act. I am much illuminated. In your position as human advisor, you are on the battlefield and we, we are comrades. I hope you understand my way. I trust you, sir. I'll give my all. However, the Ferenma problem is neither administrative nor military. I trust your decisiveness, but I also ask that you trust my co uh, caution. Right. 
Another arrow. This one strikes the bullseye square. Would you care to try, Liang? Your reputation is that of a scholar warrior, equal at home with so sword and bow as with pen and paper. The human bow is heavy, though. Do you feel up to it? Hmm. Chief Executive Wei and Wu of Lungman is here, sir. He's waiting in the meeting hall. Very well. Mr. Lin's dollar was a few days early. It was about time for Lord Wei to arrive. The Grand Tutor has arrived as well. Hmm. Did the Grand Tutor Lo and Lord Wei travel together? I expect Lord Wei is here on private matters. Official or private, there are still two honored guests at the same table. Looks like you're not the only one here to give me counsel today, Liang. <laughs> Meanwhile... My dear elder brother... I had a dream last night. I dreamt I heard the wind rushing by at midnight. I opened the window to find the desert had become a sea of sprouting trees, some of them even in full bloom. The branches of the trees grew and formed a web, trapping human within. Few are those who truly break away from home. Do you still miss human? What was the saying you had when you left human last time? I forgot. Neath crisp night's merriment resounds, travelers doubt it's truly frontier-bound. A new one. It's been a while. Looks like your thoughts have changed. A century is not too long, but I came back at this point in the dream. To me, a hundred years is simply thirty thousand days and nights. The urgent reports the scouts departing, the messengers returning. The watch has changed innumerable times since you left, and countless new bricks and stones set into this wall. But still, it stands. Did you see Nian and Dusk in Shangshu? Yeah, they haven't changed one bit. They found a place to stay. A place where they can have fun. And so you met our second brother. We lesser siblings always worry our elder bl eldest brother, don't we? Dusk is a sensitive and thoughtful little sister, but she keeps it to herself and tells no one, which is why she's often troubled. Nian looks carefree on the A surface. But she fears loneliness more than any of us. She constantly needs something new to keep her mind occupied. I don't have much to worry about you, other than maybe you getting too drunk and forgetting to pay your tab. But as the oldest sister, and without any official responsibilities, it would be good if you spent more time with your younger siblings. Do you accuse me of being an irresponsible big sister? How many families are like ours? From whom do I learn? I have to figure things out on my own. But our foolish sisters just don't know how to rise about things. They keep making it hard for themselves. Don't blame them for being self-troubled. Put yourself in their shoes, and you may not find it easy to free yourself from troubles. I'm not as free as you are. After all, you've managed to completely cut yourself off and find an entirely new self. Hmm. The name Shu and the sliver of soul are sealed within the sword. Now I'm just an ordinary man who knows a little kung fu. A little? How many martial artists would abandon their careers if they heard you just now? 
taking into account the fact that I've had centuries of practice, perhaps I should call myself less than ordinary. Hmm. The sands lose their churns through tons of sand every second, clearing a path for humans' advance. The massive nomadic city rolls towards its new goal at high speed. Where are you planning to go after you leave, human? I'll go south to see the bridges and streams, have some of the heartland brew, or see the place where Nian and Dusk are staying. The Jinju world is big. There are plenty of places to go. But I suppose all the people with whom I've shared a toast are gone now. In the distance, the heat rising from the ocean of sands warps heaven and earth. The wind is weak by the time it reaches the tower. The sand in the wind touches the cheeks, almost like a caress. 3,000 miles of yellow sand in the blink of an eye. Meanwhile, <clears throat> check the serial number on the gear. It's the Catastrophe Messengers group, which should have been back this morning. Traces of origin explosives. The bodies have probably crystallized and turned to dust. Watch out for Originium Residue. This is less than two hours from the city. Who would attack a Catastrophe Messenger on official business so close to a nomadic city? Everything valuable has been taken. It would make sense if this was the work of bandits. Or someone who wants to make it look like the work of bandits. Keep looking. We need to find the Catastrophe Survey data. Found it! It was a little further away, under a piece of broken armor. They protected it with their lives. <laughs> There's no time. Get it back to the city, but keep your eyes open. Alright, and with that, we will move into our first stage. Titled, Spring in the Borderlands. And it says here, located in a harsh, desolate sandpit, there is no way for peaches to grow in the Lord Exorcist's courtyard. Oh, and as a quick by the way, uh, for this narration series, instead of breaking the pace up with narrations of the individual units, uh, I will go straight through the stories, and then at the end of the episode we will do a, uh, quick, through, a quick read through of all the uh, new units and the uh, flavor text introduced with them. But anyway. Let's begin. We should be safe now that we are made it into human. Don't let your guard down. We will return to the barracks and present the data to the Imperial Arist Astronomical Bureau first. Then we will report to General Zuo about the situation outside the city. Of course. And not a second after I finish. An ambush! Protect the Envoy Lin and fall back! No need. We're surrounded. Who goes there? How dare we interrupt a military unit? <laughs> Watch out, Envoy Lin! Arts that turn sand into glass. How oh, quaint. I've had a feeling these uh, things weren't quite right since before we made it into the city. I take it you're after the catastrophe observation data. You killed the entire team of messengers, but you weren't able to find the data. So you had no choice but to arrange the crime scene to look like they were robbed by bandits. How shabby. Kill the broad first. You must be holding the target. Watch out for her arts. You think you have the advantage because you have more men? <laughs> a mace flies through the air and smashes into the scoundrel standing in front of Lin Yusha until he, until he crashes into the road's flagstone, shattering them to pieces. The mace could not be 
more normal, but it must have seen better days given how smooth its surface has become. A man steps forward to pick up the mace and stands in front of Linusha. A regular bladesmith, his face has been uh, scalded red by the flames of his forge and plowed into a ravine by the sandstorm, like a war drum that's crude yet firm and tough nonetheless. Impudence! <laughs> I'm coming. I'll go after them. Yeah, yeah. We must first check on the warriors first and... Uh, 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 on the warriors with all haste. Okay. The scoundrels are ruthless with their attacks. Are you alright, my fair lady? <sighs> they don't have what it takes to hurt me. Some of the men are injured. Their lives are no, uh, not in danger, though. Only passed out. They dare look for trouble with government troops in broad daylight. Makes me wonder where these people came from. Uncle Meng, what do you say I take one of them back for interrogation? We don't have the first thing. We don't know the first thing about the enemy. Yar Yi, you must learn not to be so rash. Judging by your outfit, you are not from human, yet you have the protection of human's forces. I must assume you are no ordinary lady. May I ask why these bandits are giving you trouble? I'm an official business. Don't ask any further. You little... And who are you? Why are you here? The name is Meng Tie. I run a sword forge in the southern end of the city. This is Du Yao Yi. She just came here from Shangshu. I own Xingxiu Logistics, Human Stop Logistics Company. We're heading to the city gate to arrange a welcome. This is the first time the guys I brought with me from Shangshu are on a are on a human job. It's a huge gig. They're escorting a catastrophe messenger even. Of course I have to be there to welcome them. Judging by the time, they should be back soon, Uncle Meng. Catastrophe messenger? I have a feeling you don't need to go. Hmm. Have you taken a fancy to another weapon here in my tent? It's fine. I have no need... I have no need of all these weapons. If you like, perhaps you could take my army's entire armory with you to Lungmen. Please, Lord Exorcist. Even if you had no need for all these armaments yourself, human needs them for its defense. If memory serves me right, you and I made a bet a decade ago, and you made off with a fine blade I had only just obtained. Then, five years ago, you made off with a bow the Tianxi Barrows bestowed upon me after a bit of drinking. Then allow me to invite you to another round of drink today. Please win if that is your wish. I'll back no more. I'm joking. All these years, Lungman has been providing human with the resources we need, and not once have we seen a delay in shipments. Based on this fact alone, I certainly should have sent you a few gifts myself. It's the least I, I could do. But as the chief of Lungmen, I understand you must have plenty on your plate. Certainly, you must have more important business to attend to than personally visiting human today. You could say I'm not here for business. A few days without Shi Chief Wei you won't see Lugman falling into chaos, and it's not so bad if Wei and Wu find some time to pay an old friend a visit. It so happens the Grandmaster's retirement is near, and I will be there in attendance. His retirement is indeed quite troublesome. That blade of his requires the most attentive treatment. Well, it seems in the end, this troublesome topic falls on me to explain. Grandmaster, Miss Ling, long time no see. 
It has been some time indeed. Ah. With so many old friends in attendance, that's reason enough for drink. Have you perhaps prepared some wine for us, General Zuo? Give your service. Give, yeah, given your service to human, it will be my honor to share a drink with you, Miss Ling. That said, I'm afraid it must wait for another time. I heard you have already made up your mind, and you wish to bestow your blade upon the winner of a Kung Fu scramble. Martial arts are merely the first of many ways I will be evaluating prospective successors. I will be judging whether they are worthy of my blade via other means. And I was under the impression that you would have known this long ago. The circumstances were different the last time you brought this up. And if I may, and if I am to say, although this blade must eventually be given to some someone suitable, this is not the most opportune time to do so. Grandmaster, after all this time, of all the men and women in our whole army, you've never seen a suitable candidate. Hmm. What a lively gathering. My apologies for not personally receiving you, Grand Tutor. It has been far too many years, but you seem as spirited as ever, Grand Tutor. All of you are outstanding citizens who defend the peace of Grand Yun's borders. Your magnificence gathered gather together your magnificence gathered together in one place is truly a sight for sore eyes. Alas, we have no time for idle conversation today, for we have urgent matters to at hand. We have all gathered, General Zuo. Send the men away. On my way here, I just so happened to have come across a returning patrolman. Let us listen to him. Four hours ago, our men on the city walls noticed a distress signal from distress signal from afar. When we got there, we found the catastrophe messenger team that human deployed three days ago has been wiped out. <clears throat> Yao Yi, did you not design this better yourself? Why pack it up? <laughs> Are you perhaps considering making your way home? Are you regretting letting the cheese go on this job? I'm regretting not going with them. You heard the envoy just now. Of the team of them, not one survived. The moment they got the distress signal, they immediately left to give their assistance, but were killed on their way back. These are not rowing bandits we are dealing with. What could you have possibly done to change the outcome if you were there? Uncle Meng, I'm guessing... You must have seen these things happen many times before. What do you think? <laughs> Over a decade ago, the Qingxiu Escort Association came to Yumen for a new job. That was when your father and I met each, uh, met each. We've had little contact with the other the last few years, but our friendship goes deep. He often talks about you too. Two weeks ago, you came to my forge and told me you wanted to start your own logistics company. It may only have been a decade or so, but much has changed over the years. It's nothing strange for the youngsters to want to strike out on their own. On top of that, your knowledge of the escort business and wilderness survival is no worse than any of the old veterans. I should have expected no less from the asker of the Frost, uh, Frost's Dollar. This is why I took you in. I know little about modern logistics, but having spent all these years in human, I could at least find some opportunities for you. In hindsight, it would seem I led to your friend's undoing. I was the one who brought them to human. I was also the one to send them on this job. Their deaths are on me, and I won't shrink that responsibility. It puts my mind at ease to see you have that resolve. But 
be it the escort association or a logistics company, things will always be the same. For the sake of our livelihood, we put our lives on the line. If you wish to make a name for yourself in this business, you need to understand how heavy the weight of your on your shoulders is. Yari, it doesn't matter whether this is the path you will end up taking or not. I want you to remember how you feel this very moment for the rest of your life. Yeah, of course I will remember. But I won't let the culprit here get away with killing them. Well, this has been another productive day for you, hasn't it? Try to get some rest now. I've left you two dishes. The cooks have reheated it already. This inn has a chef of truly magnificent culinary skill. Makes me want to learn a couple things from him. I'm not hungry. I can't eat this right now. You can look for your good-for-nothing father, but you need to eat nonetheless. Without the stamina, how are you going to beat him when you find him? Waifu picks up the chopsticks silently. What happened to your hand? I scraped myself in the match today, but a wound like this is nothing. Human's arena is open all day long, and I was up against lots of uh, tough opponents, and I won in the end. That explains why the inn keeps so many medicines in stock. Wait here. I'll bring you some. Show me your hand. <laughs> it's only in times like these that I remember your Wai Tian Pui's, or I guess here he's Kwai Tian Pei, his daughter. We're nothing alike. He's a grown man, but he shrink shirks all his responsibilities, washes his hands of everything. I've been living a fa fairly decent, productive life on my own. But him? He was already a lawbreaker back when I was still a kid. You're exactly right. That's why we should take him straight to the nearest LGD. Office the moment we find him. <laughs> Uncle Lee, do you think he's really here in Newman? I heard a rumor that someone saw him here a year ago. It's from your Uncle Liang, and I have no choice but to believe him. If he's really Newman, he has to have seen my name on the rankings at the city gate by now. It's been so many years. The, last, the least he could have done was stop by to check on me when he passed through Lungman. Does that mean he doesn't care about me? Or is he trying to avoid me? No, I can't say how father how fathers feel about their daughters. But blood is thicker than water. Nothing changes that. I have faith that you two will see each other one day. The question is whether the two... whether the... Uh, the question is whether the two of you will find the answer you seek once you meet. Actually, I'm still not sure I'm prepared to see him. In that case, Let's say we walk outside right now and we bump into him. What are you going to do? I'm going to break his jaw. Good choice. That concludes my summary. The catastrophe data has been sent to Imperial Astronomical Bureau's observatory and a provisional new course has been charted based on the computation's results. The injured men have all been sent to the infirmary, and Enwen Lin is currently investigating the rest. Hmm. Thank you. You are excused. The catastrophe is approaching, and I allowed this to happen within human borders in this crucial time. I apologize for my negligence. You need not belittle yourself so. The important thing right now is to find the identity of our malefactors. Your thoughts, Lord Exorcist? The Shanghai Zong. They should have been eradicated 20 years ago. 
The wild hunt of the Feralmut a thousand years ago ended the era of their rampage across the land of Great Yon. Yet this was unable to quell the masses' reverence of those terrible monsters. There have always been those who worship the Feralmut's power and revere them as gods. They consider themselves followers of the Feralmuts and banded together to locate any traces of them. The Sui Regulator has for a long time been tracking the movements of this lawless organization. And ever since the offender's commotion, it's like these rebels have been inspired by something and have been growing more and more active. They call themselves the Shenghai Zhong. The mounts, seas, and all in between shall be our masters, or so they claim. Their motto couldn't be any more absurd, but it attracted a great number of followers to join their cause. Not only do they have adherents from a variety of backgrounds far and wide, they have even been plotting atrocities in the name of the Feralmuts. Hard to imagine there are those who find it harder to put this thousand-year grudge behind them than us. It's been two decades. This is their second time making trouble here in Yumen. Yumen itself is a symbol of Yon's triumph over the Feral Moots. These villains naturally have a reason to do it harm. And with Yumen set to set sail, af sail afar, the Shanghai Zong's actions point directly to information regarding the oncoming catast eh, catastrophe. I can only assume they've learned of Yumen's destination. Investigate this immediately and ensure peace in Yumen. I accept no failures. Hmm. They did not succeed 20 years ago, and they will not succeed this time. The reason I summon all of you here today is to discuss what to do with the Grandmaster's sword. After what happened in Xingxu, there is no doubt that the offender has already made contact with the other proxies. Seal with the Grandmaster's sword is one twelfth of the bestial Sui's consciousness. Isn't this precisely why we mustn't underplay the transfer of the sword? Hmm. As things stand, the other 180 black stones are yet missing. No one knows where his next move will lead us. Should we treat all the world's affairs as a game of Go, no one can claim to be able to best him in terms of calculations. There is very little distance between him and the Sui Regulator. To leave the Regulator in charge of the sword would only achieve the oppo opposite of what we intend. Against such an opponent, an irrational move might actually be the most brilliant one. Finding a suitable outsider to take the blade might be the best, might be the solution we need. My little brother has caused all of you much trouble, after all. If this is both the Grand Tutor and the Grand Master's intention, I have no objection. Grand Master. Is something the matter? Assist the Lord Exorcist in suppressing the Shanghai Xiong. This is the Sui Regulator's last, last task for you. Once a suitable candidate has been found, the court will allow you to roam free within Yan's borders and interfere with you no longer. Human citizens may not know your name, and even though you and I will no longer live in a uh, live in hundred years, the scrolls in the Sui Regulator's libraries will record everything you've done for Yun. With my dream about to be realized, I have no reason to complain. I simply do not know whether I should lament that I will not get to stay with the city to its final moments. Hmm? Something on your mind, Miss Ling. Do any of you smell something? Floral, perhaps? I would say it's uh, peach blossoms. Peach blossoms. Located in a harsh, desolate sandpit, there is no way for peaches to grow in the Lord Exorcist's courtyard. Likewise, peach trees do not normally bloom this time of year in human. However, everyone in attendance can smell the thick aroma of peaches wafting through the window 
like the moonlight peeking through. They also see a single vividly red petal drifting into the hall and gently floating downward. Well, if that isn't strange... <laughs> Watch out! A blade appears almost out of thin air. Its tip pauses not an inch away from Wei and Wu's throat. A freezing chill pierces the flesh of everyone in the room, just as the soothing aroma of the flower quells any discomfort they had. <laughs> you caught my blade with your bare hands. You can take pride in that. With your advanced kung fu, why do something as wild as and base as ambush us? I have a question for you myself. With your immense power, why opt for that frail body? You know me? <laughs> Ling! <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Ling! I follow. Grand Tutor, General Zuo, are you okay? We're fine. To think someone could dodge a concentrated attack from both Lord Wei and the Grand Master. Unbelievable. Thank you for your assistance, Grand Master. Given her prowess, she must be skilled in more than just melee combat. Grandmaster, the sentries will be here soon. Let us prioritize capturing the assassin. Be careful. What a refined lady. Leaving us already after scattering those petals around us. If you would disturb our gathering, why not stay for a little longer? Let's see what you are trying to keep me here with. A dream? You can tell this is a dream? You still have this power, even after dividing yourself into twelfths. Oh, you know not only me, but him as well. I want to see him. And you are not him. I am I. Naturally. And why do you wish to see him? Even in a dream, I don't want to waste any time on you. Your fanciful dream cannot keep me here. It seems you've dreamt for a long, long time yourself. Now that you've awakened and returned to the mortal realm, it seems hostilities are unavoidable. If you want my life, perhaps you should tell me what kind of grudge you have against me. I don't need to have a grudge against you to want your life. Kung Fu is fine in the place of a grudge. Let me have another taste of your prowess. You don't deserve it. The woman takes a step back. Her blade slashes through the air like a strong blade of wind. Nonetheless, the tip of the blade is an inch too far from her target. Sharp as it may be, her target is unharmed. The winds are strong here in the city walls. Don't let the sand blind you. Do all of you have a catchphrase to drop before you attack? Enough. You have nowhere to run. Surrender. You have quite the party here. The woman slowly raises her sword in her hand. The gleam reflected by its blade shines just like the moon above. The moonlight itself is an opening in the dark sky from which the awakening of spring flows abundantly. Though it is mid-March, the peach trees are blooming as vibrantly as could be. There are no passerby to be found anywhere, and only the aroma of the flowers linger in the air. But if I don't want to stay, can any of you really keep me here?
and into battle we proceed. But we shall proceed with the after story. <clears throat> Who goes there? <laughs> Stop right there. Do you know where you are and exactly what that sword you're holding is? It's a sword. The sword that I've been looking for. <laughs> Let us set aside the question for the time being who it is you are working for and how you made your way in here. Hand over the sword and I'll take you to the Grandmaster. A fickle-minded, perfidious man like him does not deserve to keep the sword. Impudent! The Grandmaster has defended humans' peace for a hundred years. How dare you speak ill of him? How pretentious! What do you even know? Out of my way! I've arrested a small number of criminals, but you are the first one I've met to be so arrogant. Solemn on the outside, but self-centered on the inside. I've met plenty of men like you. I see, I have no choice but to get you to comply forcefully then. Try it. It's over. You've lost. This isn't what we settled it. This isn't where we settled this. If you would leave, surely you would leave us with an explanation. I want answers, but you have none to give me. You let her get away. With her injuries, she won't get far. Way, your old bones don't seem to be much use here. My sincerest gratitude, Lin. You are master of Shi Shao, yet you need someone to come to your rescue when your mortal enemies come attacking. I do not remember having made such an enemy. Hmm. A faint. You're injured. Where can you run? You... <laughs> Watch out, Grandmaster! <sighs> Grandmaster, what happened here? This is my fault. The sword has been taken. General, the assassin could not be found within five miles of the inner city, and there are no signs of her receiving assistance from anyone. No one else was ambushed, and neither the inner city core nor the armory show signs of having been infiltrated. No signs, or it has been confirmed they have not been infiltrated. We uh, cannot say for sure at this moment. How could someone infiltrate the human barracks and roam free, even after facing our four masters here? Extraordinary. I was too careless. Do you have any clues regarding the identity of our assassin, Lord Wei? Over the years, I've come across many who wanted my life, but I am alive and well nonetheless. All of them have either given up on the idea of... Uh, or perished long ago. I am not acquainted with our friend tonight. <laughs> Zuli, any discoveries on your end? It all happened too suddenly. I wasn't prepared and I wasn't able to take the assassin in, as a result. I'm not asking why you were unable to capture the assassin. I'm asking... I'm asking you what you saw. It was a young female assassin who uh, infiltrated us and took the sword. She was hurt when she made her escape. Aside from that, I'm afraid I don't have anything. 
A cup shatters, with the Lord Exorcist seizing all its fragments with his hand. Even with the dis uh, distinguished guest in attendance, at the moment he finds himself unable to quell his anger. Just as he wasn't able to control his shaking hand as he drew his bowstring earlier. Now that it has come to this, talking about it will do us no good. Send the order out, seal the city gates immediately, and set up checkpoints between each district. Do not allow necessary travel between them. In addition, send the word to the entire city. At the hour of Shen, two days from now, human will slow and adjust course. Have the masses make ready for this. Yes, sir. Zuoli. Sir. Capture the assassin, locate the Grandmaster's sword, and find the Shang Shanghai Zhong hiding in the city. Do all three without failure. You have three days. My personal troops are yours to command. Keep this secret, and do not disturb the people. Yes, sir. Where's Lin? He left as soon as the soldiers came. Lin has no standing in the court, meaning he has no right to stand in attendance and give you as you give your orders. <laughs> is there anything I can assist with? Seeing as the assassin is after your life, your safety should be the top priority. Once this commotion comes, I will send a battalion to escort you back to Lungmen. I ask you to stay indoors for the next few days. May I ask what you mean by that? Exactly what I said. Human will take care of the rest. Of course. Our phone this time is exceptionally skilled. Perhaps I should... I ask you to stay in the barracks and ensure the Grand Tutor's and Lord Wei's safety. It is equally dangerous to allow the criminal to roam free in the city. This affair began because of the Pharaoh Moods. Considering you are who you are, you should not get yourself involved. After all, the only ones who know your true identity are all here in the room. The general stone is hardly heavy, yet it fills the entire building with silence. A sigh can be heard from, the, from one of its corners. Very well. Do you have any objections to this arrangement, Grand Tutor? I trust your judgment, Lord Exorcist. Very well. Execute these orders at once. Hmm. Grandmaster, are you alright? I don't believe there's any... There is anyone alive who could do him harm. It seems you really believe in me. From the sound of it, you have already you have heard already. Let us set aside the issue of these soldiers outside the city for the time being. The defense of human was part of your responsibilities to begin with. Considering this arrangement, Zhuo Shen La Lao clearly doesn't trust you. Naturally, I understand and emphasize with General Zuo's position. Which is why I have a few things I need you to help me with over the next few days. This is highly unusual, and the foe we are up against is especially treacherous. I hope you'll, f you'll lend Zuo Li a helping hand. Given how he is, he may not be very receptive to me meddling with his affairs. In that case, it would seem now is not the time for us to resolve the matter between us. You need not say any more, I know the score. With how little I have to do the next few days, I am hoping you will help me finish writing the last few chapters of the Book of Kung Fu as quickly as possible. It is my duty as your student. Thank you. If there is nothing else, Grandmaster, I will take my leave. Please, get some rest soon. 
The man sighs, perhaps at the sight of the empty sword mount on the wall, or something else. How many more will you drag into this game? Once a pure stream of water flows into a polluted lake, you can no longer scoop any clean water from it. Don't you understand that? Even if you try to replace it, you will never find her in all the chaos. Why torment yourself with all this? The sound of the patrol's clanking armor can yet be heard from afar, with nothing but a deafening silence otherwise. The night is deep, the clamorous night finally the clamorous night finally calms. He lets out another long sigh. Meanwhile, Hmm? How very brave of you. How could I have failed to realize that you were here as well? Of course I am here too. Are you going to stop me? A skilled Go player making no skillful moves in an entire game. Your actions are really a bit too radical. Oh, or maybe it's because your time is limited. If that's where we are going, you barely have any time left yourself. Do you really think we can ignore everything just because that man sealed himself away in the sword? I came here for the one. Why would I be concerned with only one twelfth? I could ask you, what makes you think that you can become him? I won't become him. I am no one but myself. He and I, we have a score to settle. The grudge is yours and yours only. We are not enemies. That's not for you to decide. At the very least, at this point in time, we both have more important things to accomplish. We won't, ha we won't be a hindrance to each other. Is that a truce you're seeking? It's in both our interests. You have no reason to refuse. You really are nothing like your brothers and sisters. I hope you'll show me something more interesting the next time we meet. Miss, I heard you. Keep it down. I thought I told you not to seek me out in broad daylight. It's good to see all of you in one piece. Any progress on your end? The human markets are open for the first time in years. There are too many wares and people flowing in and out. We have no leads yet. <sighs> if it's not so convenient for us to look into this, let's have somebody else do it. What do you mean? How many of the merchants at the market markets here are locals? And how many are from Lungmen? How many of the people behind us have missing paperwork and the LGD... Uh, at the LGD or are in a uh, hawk to us, sift through them and find someone who'd have an easier time than we would. It's not that hard. Daishu Z. This uh, sounds like it could be against the rules. Uh, that <clears throat> phrase he says at the beginning, Daishu Z, uh, essentially in this context, I believe translates to uh, something like just miss or young miss or Something along those lines. Essentially, it's uh, addressing her with respect. <clears throat> Do as I say. <laughs> Flashing back two weeks ago. Farrenmuth followers. You need to know where the intel came from. Out of the enemies that Jan has faced in the past thousand years, no small number of them lurked in the shadows. Yemen may rely on Lungman for its supplies, but you shouldn't be responsible for security within their borders. Yemen is an impenetrable shield, but there are pests hiding behind that shield. They need to be exterminated by others. I want to send you there to take care of this. 
You can operate as a special LGD commanding officer. On paper, you will be in charge of security while the two cities are connected, and you will have a certain level of support from me. I need you to run a thorough investigation into the dangerous elements hiding among human citizenry and ensure it's smooth sailing. Should the need arise, you may resort to the most extreme measures. <sighs> Why me? Because you are Lin Yusha. Because you can take care of this. I want you to do in human what the Rat King did in Lungman all those years ago. Chief Wei, you didn't discuss this with my father before you came to me, did you? Yusha. Dad, you didn't tell me you were coming? You accepted Wei and Wu's mission. I came to take a look. So you've heard. Investigating smugglers, eh? I didn't want to trouble you. Look at you, going through all the trouble to hide this from me. It's Wei and Wu who should be troubled. Who should be troubling? You'll never consider turning this down. Somebody has to maintain the peace here. Wei and Wu has many a capable character under his wing. Why must you of all people clean up his mess? I am... Never mind. I could figure out what kind of excuse Wei is making even if I had to think with my tail. You should know what's happened tonight. So that's why the soldiers locked the city gate. So much has happened in the span of a day. If this was really a coincidence, it would have to be a hell of a coincidence. The chief of Lungman finds himself the target of an assassination attempt. The Grand Master has his sword taken, and an Imperial Astronomical Bureau messenger was killed. Each of these would make the headlines on its own. And they will... They all occurred within hours of each other. It's unimaginable what kind of forces are behind them. Wei and Wu came to you. Did he explain how dangerous this was going to be? All I knew was this wasn't going to be a walk in the park. Human is not Lungman, and you are not me. I know that well. I will deal with this carefully. The... The agents I brought with me from Nungman are all masters of their fields and have all followed you for years. Plus, I know the world of Jiangshu. I've seen enough. If you know what it is you are doing, then I won't keep rambling. I just hope this will be resolved quickly without delaying your trip to Victoria. It's just a study trip. I don't have to go. You've helped me and the LGD take care of plenty of things the last few years, to the point you haven't been able to do what you truly wanted to do yourself. I did all that on my own volition, and I will and it was all for Lungman. It's not your own choice if you haven't seen another path. Sometimes I wonder if, perhaps, like Shen, you should <coughs> That are you hurt? I'll get a doctor. No need. It's been years since I've taxed my arms and legs so much. My bones are aching. Looks like taking walks in the park every day isn't quite enough exercise. I'll take you back to the general's estate. No need for that either. I'll find an inn nearby to stay the night. Even getting to meet my old friends once... Uh, once is once it a plenty, and I can't stand the atmosphere in that house tonight. My, what a coincidence. I heard a commotion at the edge of the city earlier in the evening, and I figured something big must have happened. And now that I find you here, Miss, Mr. Lin, I'm sure something big must have happened. So, what are you saying is an old rat like me might as well be a plague? Of course not. 
I was only joking. Yusha, let me have a few words with Mr. Lee in private. Please excuse me. From the looks of it, your search in human hasn't been too successful. Don't get me started. The man has been gone for well over a decade. I was never banking on finding him within a month. But it doesn't matter how long it takes. We still have to look for him. You are a carefree man. It's only when it concerns this old friend of yours that you burden yourself so much. Maybe I owe him from a past life. Since you aren't in a hurry, may I hire Lee's detective agency for a job? How could I refuse a job from Mr. Lin himself? That gets me thinking though. Haven't I been taking on a few too many troublesome jobs lately? It goes to show what a capable man you are. I'll say I owe you one if you do this for me. Well, with such a generous offer on the table, looks like I really have to think this over and see if I can manage it. <laughs> Only a crafty fellow like you could manage this. One, two, nine, ten. Uh, all the names above me on the rankings look pretty tough. Okay, calm down. Just do your best. Why can't I leave the city? The of my brothers just died out there. The gate is closed. Please leave. Hey, be reasonable, can't you? You? Flashing back. Whoa! The Forte hunk with the Golden Maze got kicked right out of the arena. That feline girl has won five straight matches now. <sighs> hey, Ni Hao, I watched all your matches today. You got amazing Kung Fu. Want to come and work for me and my escort association? Escort association? I'm not interested. Don't be so quick to refuse. With your skills, I can give you a more than decent wage. I'm not planning on making a living with my fists. I have a degree in mechanical engineering. I'll have you know. Mechanical what? Ah, uh, never mind that. That just means you're something of a scientist, right? Yeah, science. The Escort Association I'm talking about is a kind of logistics company. Science graduates like you have a bright future with us. Hey, don't just walk away. I'm serious. <laughs> just walked away on her. So, that just happened. It sounds you're going to have to wait till the lockdown is over before you can take your friends' belongings and news of their deaths back home to Shangshu. I'm the one who brought them here. No matter how, I will bring them home. Before I came to Yumen, I ran into Mr. Zhang in Shangshu by chance. He told me that when the day comes that no one needs Kung Fu to protect themselves, that's when we will finally have true peace. That is right about that, but for now I'm more fond of another saying. An eye for an eye. I will find the one who did this. What are you two doing here? Yusha? The government official lady from earlier? I thought you said you'd, uh, you'd get to the bottom of this. How are you going to get to the bottom of anything now that we're on lockdown. You two know each other? There's been a turn of events. Things are apparently trickier than I thought. Then let me investigate with you. I, I can help out too. It's too dangerous. I can't drag outsiders. What's that sound? Drums from the outer city district? Look, the beacons are lit on the city walls. Gondor calls for help. It's the Wang Feng Festival, one of human's traditions. It's a ceremony held every year at the beginning of spring, and it lasts three days. The drums at the barracks are beaten for the citizens' benefit. Each beat tells the city, the lands, and all great Yan are safe. 
As for the signal fires on the city walls, they are lit to guide the soldiers who gave their lives on the battlefield home. Home. Catastrophes sweep across the country, barbarians terrorize the borderlands, and bandits stir up trouble. The drums are beaten 17 times, representing the trials and tribulations that befell human the past year, both big and small. This border city has crossed the country's northern regions for centuries, and its citizens are hardened by these disasters. The great wind cannot extinguish the flames in the meadow. The man's eyes fix upon their homes through the night. Alright then, and that will be it for part one of this narration. Like I said, this is going to be sort of a daily series of sorts uh, on the channel right now, so you will not be waiting too long for part two. But this will be it for part one, so all I can say is thank you very much for watching and listening to this narration. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like on it. It helps me a lot and also tells me that you enjoy these videos as well. But more importantly, it helps a lot in the algorithm, so thank you very much in advance. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing there. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there is a lot, lot more on the channel if you just want to listen to Arknet stories and uh, have some refreshers for maybe some older stories that you forgot about. There is quite the selection at this point. And uh, yeah, again, thank you very much. If you're pulling on Ling's banner, by the way, uh, sorry, Ling? Ling. Uh, Lin, Lin's and Chungya's banner, uh, good luck. If you want to watch my poll video, it's uh, right on the channel, right before this video uploaded. So, uh, pl please don't be too pissed on me <laughs> at me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I will see you in the next video tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>